Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss regarding data acquisition systems, which we are going to use in an automation regarding mechatronics systems. So let's start with the topic data acquisition systems. So what is a data acquisition system? Data acquisition is the process of sampling the signals that measure real world physical conditions and converting the resulting samples into digital numeric values that can be manipulated by a computer that is called as a data acquisition. So in short in data acquisition what we are going to do is we are going to take the physical changes in the system by using the sensors and convert them uh, in a digital form. So we will go through the process one by one. Uh, DAS or DAQ typically measures an electrical or physical phenomenon such as voltage, current, temperature, pressure or sound and converts the analog waveforms into digital values for processing and analysis. A DAQ consists of sensors, DAQ measurement hardware and a computer with programmable software. A data acquisition system is comprised of three parts an input output subsystem, a host computer and the controlling software. Hence these systems are often referred to as embedded data acquisition systems or DAQs. Need of a data acquisition system. Data acquisition systems interface between the real world of physical parameters which are analog and the artificial world of digital computations and control. DAQs are used widely because they are low cost, accurate and relatively simple to implement. Data acquisition systems are capable of measuring hundreds of variables simultaneously. They are now used by most engineers and scientists for laboratory research, industrial control, test and measurement of input and output data to and from a computer. Industries that presently employ such automatic systems include steel making, food processing, paper production, oil refining, chemical manufacturing, textile production, cement manufacturing and others. Let's go through different components of a data acquisition system. Firstly, the sensors. Sensors which measure physical variables such as temperature or strain or pressure or flow or force and motion. In motion, it may be a displacement of velocity and acceleration, whatever is the motion. Signal conditioning devices to convert sensor signals into desired form. Okay, then analog to digital converters which convert conditioned sensor signals to digital value which can be used by computer. And lastly, a computer with the appropriate application software to process, analyze and log the data to disk. Such software may also provide a graphical display of the data. So a data acquisition system is nothing but a typical mechatronic system where we, we are having sensor as an input device then that input will be fed to signal conditioning device so that we can get groomed signal which is required by this system then A to D converter as we know physical real world signals are all continuous with time and we can't directly give them to a computer. So computers will always understand the digital binary codes. So we need to convert the physical analog signals into a digital form. So we need ADCs. Then obviously a computer which is going to process whatever signal has received from the system and then it will produce some output which is again given to the system or if it is a measurement system we are going to display whatever the data which is received by a computer. 
so these are different components of a data acquisition system uh, then what is a daq model it can be divided into again three categories first is source and system so it consists of the system from which the data is to be acquired with the help of a different sensors and signal conditioning circuit likewise system will be some physical part of the uh, universe where there will be some changes are happening like if there is a controlled space then we need to go for changes in temperature in that space or changes in the pressure in, in the space likewise uh, there may be some changes in the system it may may be having different sensors like temperature sensor is there pressure sensor force sensor okay so uh, the list we have already seen so that is a source from which we are going to get the physical signal then daq hardware so it acts as an interface between the signal and the pc okay daq cards often contain multiple components like multiplexers are there AT adcs are there dacs are there high speed timers and rams are there these are accessible via bus by a microcontroller okay uh, which can run the small programs and then daq software specialized daq softwares may be delivered with the daq hardware daq software is needed in order to interface the daq hardware and to work with the pc okay so when we are going to get the DAQ hardware, obviously the software will become inbuilt in the hardware so that we can interface the uh, DAQ hardware with the uh, PC and there will be some interfacing. So these are the components of uh, data acquisition module. Uh, here we can see in a pictorial uh, presentation uh, different components of a DAQ module. Uh, very first is the here in a blue color we can see is a physical system so physical variables like uh, we have already discussed temperature pressure or flow or position or velocity or acceleration or force so these are physical parameters which we are going to measure by using a sensor or a transducer uh, okay and here is the signal measured by the sensor or transducer uh, but it is having some noise that is uh, definitely some other frequencies are also added in the required frequency of the signal so noisy electrical signal will be produced by the sensors uh, once it measures the physical change in the system uh, suppose we take an example of a temperature so we uh, measure uh, for measuring the temperature suppose if the thermocouple is used as a sensor then we know thermocouples uh, work work on a Seebeck or effect or a Peltier effect where uh, in a thermocouple there are two junctions one is called as a reference and other is test junction we uh, keep the uh, test junction in contact with the place from where we need to measure the temperature and because of the change in the temperature uh, so the AMF is generated in the dissimilar metallic wires at a junction of a thermocouple so there will be an electrical signal produced because of the change in the temperature in the thermocouple wire uh, which is measured by a thermocouple it may be having some additional frequency signals also there so we need to pass that sen uh, sen uh, signal coming from a sensor through a signal conditioning device so here filtered and amplified signal so what is done here is this signal is passed through a filter so noise is reduced and exact signal uh, will be uh, coming out of the signal conditioning devices with an amplification so amplifier is also so filters as well as amplifiers are used for uh, grooming this signal coming from a sensor then we know from thermocouple we get few millivolts of a uh, voltage generated uh, which cannot be measured easily so we need to amplify it in few volts so that the system can understand the uh, signal so amplifiers are used for augmenting that signal and then that signal which is an analog signal is again given to a 
an A to D converter. So, analog to digital converter. So, that the signal can be converted into some digital data or uh, in terms of binary data, we can get the output of a to d converter here see uh, 8 bit resolution digitized signal will be available after sending it to a to d converter uh, like we can get here so it is a 8 bit binary data is available and it is a 8 bit binary code as we can see so this is totally a data acquisition module uh, with uh, different steps okay so first part of that module is a sensor in order to sense and measure physical variables such as pressure or flow and motion it is necessary to use transducers or sensors which convert a physical variable into electrical signals as we have discussed and transmit these signals to a signal conditioning devices or directly to the data acquisition board Okay, if necessary, we are going to condition the signal. If it is not, we can directly send it to the DAQ board. The six distinguishable energy forms that are usually measured are radiation, like light radiation, infrared radiation, nuclear radiation, then mechanical, like displacement, velocity, acceleration, force or torque, then thermal, that is temperature or heat flux, then electrical, that is resistance, capacitance, voltage current, energy, and power. These are different forms of electrical signals that usually are measured. Then magnetic like magnetic flux density and then chemical like pH and chemical composition. So these are the different forms of signals which uh, or energy forms which uh, can be measured by using sensors and which will be sent uh, to the system. Okay. Then next is signal conditioning that is uh, the signal conditioning as we have already gone through is signal conditioning device perform the different functions like it supplies power to the transducer when required it amplifies the signal it filters the signal and it digitizes the sensor signal example using a programmable gain amplifier so here we get an amplified uh, output from an input which is again can be understood better. So provide an appropriate output signal that can be easily processed by the A to D converter. So after signal conditioning, the signal will be going to A to D converter. So the signal coming out of a signal conditioning device must be uh, readily acceptable by A to D converter. Okay, uh, that is the need. Then most common signal conditioning functions with uh, we have already gone through our amplification of the signal, linearization, pole junction compensation in case of thermocouple signal, obviously, filtering, attenuation, excitation, common mode rejection, and so on. These are few of them. Then the next part that is data acquisition hardware. The DAQ hardware turns the computer into a measurement and automation system. The main criteria to consider while selecting a DAQ device for specific applications are first types of input channels, is it a single channel system or a multi channel system, then compatibly with the variety of protocols, then number of analog inputs channels in case of multi channel system, then sampling rate, resolution and accuracy. So we need to go for these specifications. So here in this diagram, we can go through different circuits. So very first diagram, which is at the top of the page is a single channel system where single transducer or sensor is used, which is giving signal to a signal conditioner. From the signal conditioner, the signal is going to the ADC, that is A to D converter. From there, it is going to buffer and from that, it is going to the computer. So it is a single channel system. Then the next is, a multi channel system in multi channel system there will be more number of uh, measurements can be easily taken like uh, we can use different uh, n number of sensors here three sensors are used those three sensors are having their own separate signal conditioning devices also so each signal is having its own signal conditioning system and from that the signal is coming to a daq board 
and from DAQ board it is going to computer ok. So, what are the components of DAQ board that is uh, that can be seen in the figure at the bottom of the board that is the last figure. So, the data which is coming from the signal conditioner. So, here are these data directly coming to the DAQ board. So, very first component in the DAQ board is a multiplexer. Uh, we know that multiplexer will be having n number of inputs and one output ok. So, it will choose uh, which input to be sent to the amplifier according to the program set ok. So, multiplexer will so all the different signals coming from the different signal conditioning devices will come at multiplexer. Multiplexer will choose at a time one signal from that and it will give it to the amplifier that signal is again amplified and given to the ADC that ADC ADC will again convert the analog signal into a digital form and it will give it to the control and status register or data register and then from there that signal can be given to the computer through the connection ok. So, these are few circuits regarding DAQs. Now, again DAQ hardware, the hardware basically consists of the A to D converter as we have seen already in the diagram, A to D converter is there. So, it ADCs transform an analog voltage into a binary number, we know that, we have all gone through working of ADCs also, a uh, series of ones and zeros obviously. The number of binary digits or bits that represent a digital number determines the resolution of ADC that also seen, uh, seen by us. Then interfaces, the DAQ system is in the form of module, then it can be connected to a computer's port like parallel port, series, USB, etc. Or if it is in the form of card, they are connected to slots like ISAM, CAPC, IPC, IETC in the motherboard directly. Okay? So, we need to uh, in interfaces to connect these DAQs with the computers. Okay? DAQ software, now DAQ software is needed for the hardware to work with PC. Okay? Only hardware is uh, no use, we need a software for interfacing as well as working of the module. It is the most critical factor in the obtaining reliable and high performance operation. The software transforms the PC and the hardware into a complete data acquisition system which can analyze and display the parameters acquired from the source. The Different softwares available are broadly classified into two categories. One is programmable software which involves the use of programming languages such as C++ or Visual C++ or BASIC etc. The advantage of using this software is it provides flexibility but increases the complexity of the code. And the next is data acquisition software packages which do not require any programming. They enable developers to design the custom instruments best suited to their application example lab view or matlab ok so this was regarding the q softwares now the processors data acquisition processors for real time data acquisition dap boards are available which have on board processors all data acquisition processor boards consist of on board processor like intel multitasking real time operating system on board memory support external expansion boards to increase the number of data channels ok. Some of the major advantages of using DAP boards are high quality measurement, high sampling rates, signal generation and real time response. Now what are the advantages of a data acquisition system that are discussed here, reduced data redundancy, reduced updating errors and increased consistency greater data integrity and independence from applications programs, improved data access to users through use of host and query languages, improved data security, reduced data entry or storage and retrieval costs, facilitated development of new applications program. These are advantages of DAQs. Now disadvantages, there are a few. Database systems are complex difficult and time consuming to design, substantial hardware and software startup costs, damage to database affects virtually all applications and programs, extensive conversion cost in moving from a file based system to a database system 
and initial training required for all programmers and users so these are few disadvantages of a data acquisition system okay so the conclusion of this study is data acquisition systems typically convert analog physical condition into a digital values for easy processing DAQ is advantageous as we can store a lot of physical conditions data in a digitized form DAQ helps in easy processing of data as well as easy comparison can be done so today DAQ is used in almost every field industry and companies because of the advantages discussed so that is the overall conclusion regarding the data acquisition systems i hope you have understood the daqs very well thank you